Good morning, it's Dan and Lee in our Sunday class. And today we're talking about overcoming. Good morning, Miss Lee, how are you doing? Coughing today, coughing. Miss Lee coffee. has a sore throat. She went to the doctor. She isn't sick. Probably allergies. She's good. But we're struggling to overcome the sickness of allergies because in the world there's allergies. In eternity, there'd be no allergies. But this week we had the opportunity to overcome something else. I don't even want to say what it was. Yeah, but we can. Okay, you say then. We had a bunch of little mices around. M mices? Mises, mices. Maybe <laughs> rats. I don't know. Mises, I don't think they're I rats. I think no, they're I think smaller. They're mice. But they, we've had them before, and they come in. This is the jungle. We live in Florida. There's all bugs and, and critters and snakes. and You're mice. always overcoming and taking dominion or the subduing the earth to God's purpose. That's what we do as Christians. We don't just subdue it to our purpose. It's not self-interest, as the capitalists say. It's God's purpose. That's a core difference between Christianity and capitalism. Capitalism is an economic system. Christianity is an economic system. Why is it an economic system, Miss Lee? Well, the most basic thing is Jesus paid the price for our sins. Oh, that is so important. But why did he have to pay the price for our sins? Because Didn't God make the earth? Because someone stole it. Oh, that's right. Because Satan deceived Eve, and then he took it away from Adam through theft. He stole it. But God didn't say, oh, but it was, once you stole it, it was in his possession, so it was his property, and God came in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, and died on a cross and then he took his blood to heaven to cover the sins of the whole world and actually have all authority in heaven now. so now we have the power to overcome and that brings us to how we overcome the mice how do we overcome the mice there's a lot of ways there's mouse traps there's about 10,000 kinds but they don't work very well we have a, a terrier that's trying to hunt them but and they hide we have her. a terrier that spots them and points, but they get behind the walls and she can't get out. And we don't have a cat because Lee, Lee's allergic. So we have to overcome all those obstacles. See, it isn't, it, we don't live in utopia. We live in this world that has things that are messed up. So we are to subdue the earth and to God's purpose. And God's purpose <coughs> is not to have these critters in our house to give us disease because we're to live a long and good life. So what did we come up with? Decon. Decon! <laughs> yeah, we used it at the ranch all the time, or not the ranch, at the uh, at, our at the farm. zoo mm -hmm. and all the time, and uh, it works really well. And we've used it here once, and they all went away. And it's about a year later, the decon ran out, and now we had to put it back in the walls. So that's what Jesus is talking about, giving us permission to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. Because that's what we're fighting. The world, the flesh, and the devil. So, Miss Lee, where are we reading today? Uh, today we are reading in John 16, 29 through 33. And did you want me to start? Let's begin. His, meaning Jesus, his disciples said to him. Now, where are they at? They're in the upper room. We're still this going is, over the... This is the upper room discourse. Very yeah. important we understand where we're at in history. Lots this, of stuff he's telling We can't just take passages and say, oh, I claim it. It's mine. Yeah. It has to be applicable to, and this is applicable to all believers. His disciples said to him, Behold, you now are speaking plainly and not in riddles. Now, he was speaking plainly because he said he's, he's going to the Father, and now you'll be able to talk to God, the Father, too. So it's like they understand. Oh, I get that. Oh, okay. okay. All right. We now know. You open the door. We, now, we don't have to go through the priest anymore. We now know. We now know that you know all things 
and need not that anyone question you. By now this, that is a profound statement that you know all things. Let me read this again. We now know These are that you know all things and need not that anyone question you. How can you. anyone know all things? There's only one way. He has to be God. He has, he has to, be to God. have created it all, That's to right. know it all. He knows. And, and, and in Jesus' case at this time in history, he know that they know that the Father is revealing to him everything, everything. So, so okay. even the smartest person in the whole world doesn't know everything. Oh, excuse me. Well, I had to sneeze. Well. I couldn't hit the push and talk button. <laughs> well, the the smartest person in the world, the person who has the highest IQ, yeah. still doesn't know everything. He isn't as smart as Jesus. Right. That's the that's mm -hmm. way I like to say it because people think Christians are stupid, and I do too most of the time because they don't think. They're with the secular schools, and the secular to schools told them, Christians are stupid, you just sit down and shut up and sit in the and back. And they room. do. They sit down and and they up. just accepted that. Yeah. And I was an atheist when I was in college, and I didn't accept it. I thought they were kind of silly. They were. I saw they were manipulating me. Mm -hmm. Even as an atheist, I saw these guys were not telling me. They didn't know everything. And they were manipulating with language. I saw that as a non-Christian. Christians have just accepted it. We gotta quit accepting it, and we've gotta overcome it. That's part of it. This language problem that we are we're the stupid, they're the smart. And here's the thing, I think we need to not be afraid that we're gonna say the wrong thing. So what if we don't say it so perfectly? What? Say we're the wrong we're thing. talking. That's how you learn. You say the wrong thing, you get attacked, you kinda get embarrassed you go back a little and bit. Study. You go back you now you know what the questions are, you didn't know. You study and you improve. That's the main reason Lee and I know quite a bit. It's because we've messed up more than most people. Yeah. Well, we we've, been, we've been alive a long time, too. Well, yeah, but so see, give us more time to mess we, we up. have had more time to mess up. <laughs> but you know what? It's it's like I, I never claim to know everything. I claim to know some things. It's interesting, truly though, true. isn't it? When you talk to people, they say, oh, you just think you know everything. They don't say no. that to me. They usually argue. With I never, me. I never said I think I know everything. But what I don't know, I'll find out for you if you'll just give me uh, a yeah. chance. Yeah, and and many people think that questioning is attacking, but really, you got to understand. Sometimes people are questioning you so they can know. Yeah, they may not know, and that's why they're. They they don't understand, so they question you. You just got to make it clearer. I learned that in basic business 101. You go in to sell a product, they may, they have questions. You, they're called objections to buying. Okay. In evangelism, people have objections to submitting to God. It's not they are against the product, a question. It is they need more information to persuade them to purchase. They, just like non-Christians, need more information <clears throat> to be persuaded to believe. Because really, a purchase is a belief system. You, you believe this is going to work for you. If you it's a copier, I sold copiers and printing presses. They believed it was going to save money, and they purchased it. That was the, the purchasing was the act of faith. They had to be first persuaded that it was the thing to do. Well, we have to do the same thing as we deal with people. Well, here's something I'm thinking. People a lot of times will say, well, I can't do that. It just, you, it, It's just too hard to believe that much. And yet, we go to the store and we buy a pound of hamburger and we believe that it's safe to eat. Yeah. We believe that it doesn't have an E. coli or salmonella or mm -hmm. some other terrible bacteria. We take it home and we fix it for our family because we believe because we it have will trust. nourish them. We who do we have in trust them. in? Well, we have trust in the system of food production, I guess. Okay, but who? What is the system? I want to get a little more specific. Uh, the grocery store, the, the USDA. Grocery store, the USDA that regulates things. The, the buyers, EPA, the, the transportation, the transportation, people, the people who, the butcher the that butcher, he has washed his hands and yeah. he's packaged the meat in a clean. There are so bag. many ways you could there's get so much, sick yeah, so in clean. the process of of from raising that cow as a baby and giving it the wrong medicines mm -hmm. to putting it in your mouth. Right. It takes tremendous amounts of faith. Yeah. And we have faith. Yeah. 
But the problem, everybody has it, and everybody exercises it, but usually they exercise their faith to the even, wrong object. Here's the thing. Even if you like to eat all natural or organic, you're still putting a lot of faith in that whole process. Yeah, that that's that right. food is, is you're, good. You're faith. putting faith in that the idea that when they... They created a compost pile, they did it properly and got all the E. coli out of there and so they're not pouring live E. coli on as fertilizer yeah. and they're, they're making, you know, there's a lot of process yeah. issues so and that those, those pickers wash their hands after dealing with the poop they were putting on there as fertilizer yeah, exactly. you know i mean there's so, so many much. there's so many so much faith, faith you have yeah, to so have many and faith. really a christian is no different than a secularist in the sense that they both have faith yeah because we all live by faith <laughs> so the Excuse the me. issue is back to how do we overcome our unbelief in jesus by information and that's what Jesus has given him. He just gave them information that I know because the Father has told me. And now I'm telling you, you can go directly to the Father. Mm -hmm. So you can overcome your unbelief. So finally, the disciples believe, yes, you did come forth from yeah. God. Yeah. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Lo, an hour is coming and has come already when you will be scattered, each to his abode, and you will leave me alone. Now, Jesus is actually prophesying when he's going to, about to be arrested in a few hours. And they're going to, they're going to persecute the, these apostles, and they're going to scatter. So he's telling them uh, what's about to happen in the close future uh, so they can learn to trust him in the far future. Mm -hmm. This is a great principle of testing. Uh, in the sense, say, global warming, if you applied this same principle, if you tested the predictors in the short term, how many of their predictions have come true? Zero. <laughs> well, a perfect example of this is about a week or so ago. Yeah. You know, they're always they're always giving you the hurricane forecast, tropical mm -hmm. storm. It's out here. It's coming. But last week. One developed overnight, and overnight. we were had a tropical storm. Yeah, right here. Right on top of it. Right us. on top of us. Boom! They never even saw it. At night, they said it was going to be beautiful the next day, and it wasn't. It wasn't. So they don't know the future of the weather, and then that's a way to test a prophet. Can they predict close things so you can test them? And these global warming people and these these climate change people, they are wrong about everything short term. But then they say, you should believe the long term. Yeah. Jesus is showing them, look, I'm going to give you some evidence of who I am. And he did here. Even with all the technology that they have, the satellites, the radar, the airplanes that go up and follow the storms, they never know where those hurricanes are going until they go. And well, they don't they even know when a, they're going to form. Yeah, this one, yeah, this one just, this, it, it was wasn't a, a hurricane. It was a tropical storm, but it's real close. Yeah. High winds. When we you had looked at the like radar, 50 it mile like an hour winds, and it looked like a hurricane, and yeah. it just popped up overnight. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and had... they went to bed. It was so funny here yeah. in Tampa. <laughs> the report the night before: beautiful skies tomorrow, 20% chance of rain, normal forecast. Yep. And the next morning, oh, we really missed this one. <laughs> no, they don't know. You can't tell these things. But They're Jesus terrible. knows. The Father, who is all present in time, space, and history, right. and He knows. Okay. So, so it's a better, it's 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 a more sure revelation Jesus than the is weather. He's telling His disciples that they're gonna, there's gonna be a short time here. They're gonna just leave Him. Yeah, they're gonna alone. They're gonna go all over to the house. And Peter, we're gonna read about this in a minute next week or so. Yeah. So, so Peter says, "Oh, I'll never do that." Yeah. But you know, we'll go on. I don't want to go there. Okay. So He says, "Yet I am not alone." For the Father is with me. This is so critical. There's so many times in our Christian life as we're born again. And the, the key passage, I, I, I really wanted to go here real quick. I've got to get my computer on so I can read it because it went off on me. It says um, in John 5, 4, it says, <coughs> first, I'm sorry, 1 John 5, 4, it says, For <coughs> anyone born of God overcomes the world. Anyone born of God overcomes the world. 
This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Mm. This is the formula for overcoming the world. Now, the world is the ideas, the thinking, the philosophy, the system of authority, you know, the things we see, the material world. And it's time, space, matter. Uh, it's the gardening problems. It's the relationship problems. It, in other words, by looking to God, we can over and His principles, the laws of nature and the laws of nature's God. As it says in the Declaration, by looking to the laws of nature and the laws of nature's God, we can overcome the world. And that's what we're here for. Uh, when you when you feel like you're, well, what am I here for? The disciples, I'm sure, were wondering what they were here for when Jesus was dead for that three days. I know. You tell me all the time. I'll say, oh, this is too hard to do, or I don't know how I can do this, or why did this problem come up at this time? Dan always says, well, that's what we're here for. And, that, of course, and I have is, to roll my eyeballs sometimes. She does. She doesn't like oh, to hear that. Oh, gosh. But instead of saying, oh, I wish we were, murmuring, we look at the problem. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's tiring. It's tiring that the world never quits. It's tiring that the devil never quits. It's tiring that the flesh never quits. We live in a war zone. It's reality, folks. Get used to it. And once you do, you can overcome. Then you have periods of, of rest and enjoyment. And you have periods of battle. And But how do we overcome? Our victory is to overcome, and it's done by our faith in God's principles, which are the laws of nature. God created the laws of nature and the laws of nature. God, that's why science, not evolution, science, what's observed, what's repeatable, has helped us overcome. Now, I think of one thing that's helped us overcome the problem of getting from one place to another in science. What, has, what is the law that we have discovered? I don't know what the law it's is. It's the law but of, of combustion. Air, air, well, that that <laughs> the law that of is yeah, well that I don't know if there's such a law, but the law of aerodynamics <clears throat> that that a wing will lift. Oh, okay, fly. And you can fly. Mm -hmm. And the Bible actually predicted that we would be able to travel to and fro a whole bunch, but it didn't predict there will be a discovery of the law of da da da. Yeah, people probably thought, man, are we going to be riding our donkeys forever back and yeah, forth? That's yeah. what they would say. Yeah, we're not going to go very far on a donkey. <laughs> so the thing is, though, we can overcome. We overcame the travel problem because of looking at the laws of nature. And those laws of nature were created with the laws of engineering and stresses and things like that. And all those things brought together through creativity, our labor, counting hours, human labor, <laughs> yeah, and, and these resources have created the ability for, like my daughter just came back from Africa. Where was it? She hasn't gone yet. Oh, she's she hasn't going. Gone? No, she's well, going. Where were those pictures at? That was something else. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about, but I think no. she went. No, she hasn't gone yet. I don't know when they're going. Anyway, they're going. <laughs> I can't keep up with people. So, okay, go ahead. Where are we going here? Okay, well, we are going I'm to lost in time. Yeah, so you got to know where time is. Lost and I get in space lost sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so Jesus says he's not alone. The Father is with me. These things have I spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Now, this is very important. As Jesus had already talked about this. I bring peace, not as the world. He said, you're going to be in trouble here because I'm going away. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to be in trouble internally. And that's really why I keep reminding Miss Lee, he says, this is what we're here for. See, she gets unpeaceful about trouble. She gets kind of frantic. Uh, that's a little extreme a word, but what is the word you would use? You get stressed. I don't know. Just go on with it. <laughs> no, I'm give me kidding. a word. It's an... <coughs> I, I think I get overwhelmed. Get overwhelmed. That's a good word. You get overwhelmed. Because I with want the, everything to be just right. You want it to be right, so you get overwhelmed with it being out of order. Every, we all do that. I do it. And because I set my mind on, well, this is what I'm here for, how do I solve this problem? It's like, oh, more, there's more weeds in the garden. Oh, man, it's just terrible. And it's very, hot outside today. Oh, how do I overcome and, it? And I admit it freely, I'm very 
OCD, obsessive compulsive. She wants everything simple. perfect. And so I want everything to be just right. And, you know, when people come, I want everything to work just right so that everyone's happy and enjoying themselves. And, and so, so I Satan get attacks her on her gift <coughs> or disease. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a gift. Well, a gift is organization. Yeah, it's a gift of organization. But it also is, you know, the disease is but OCD. It, but it gets a little extreme sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and I mean just a little. It's not. It's not. Uh, but, ha not Howard Hughes level no. yet. No. But the when thing I, is, if I died, I think she might go. The Howard important Hughes thing level. is, though, that I recognize that I have that. Yes. So I'm constantly. And that's the key to this. I'm constantly setting my mind to not do certain things. The key that I to being do. overcomers is recognize mm -hmm. that you're at war with the world, the flesh, the devil. No. That's your world, the flesh, the devil. These problems are going to happen. There is no utopia mm -hmm. on this side of eternity. Uh, you know, and I'm not even sure. I think we'll always be fighting. We'll always be warriors. We'll always, but it'll be different wars, different kinds. Now, that's just my imaginary ideas. That isn't in the Bible. Uh, we'll always be conquerors because that's kind of how God is, and that's what he does. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so, um, <laughs> these things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. And how did he do that? I don't know how did he do that. He trusted in the Father. Oh, that's like, what you're saying. Okay, sometimes I don't know where you're going. Just like we questions. trust in the Father. And he says, everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. So, so even in, in like, you know, today's world, we've got riots going on in Virginia. We've got the threat of North Korea going to nuke America. We've got, you know, and that's only two of the top things. And then there's, you know, a million other things going on. But... We should be aware, but we don't have to be afraid. Of well, every things. generation <laughs> thinks that they had it the worst. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, I remember, I, I think about uh, Daniel Boone time and the frontier, and they lived out there, and at any moment, a group of Indians could come and scalp you. Or bears. Or bears. <laughs> come and eat you. Or in the South Alligators. Yeah. So they hadn't taken dominion enough for civilization yet. So that's why many people would go live in the cities. Uh, and that's, that's what the cities were for. There were safer places where the wilderness was not a safe place. And really that's the difference, <coughs> I think, than an average churchgoer and a missionary. A missionary is the tip of the spear kind of person. He's out there on the tip of the spear of the back. He's out in the places that nobody else has been. Uh, where the um, the average churchgoer uh, tends to play it safer, and they're still applying God's principle of being fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, rule it, so do it. Uh, but they t they give, they give to the tip of the spear people. Mm -hmm. The problem is, and this tip of the spear idea is a very important idea, because the church is kind of made up of the tip of the spear. The head of the spear has got weight to it. That's the institutions behind the missionary, and then you've got it's connected. It connects to the, to the handle, to the handle or the rod, yeah. and then the rod has to be strong and straight. But what tends to happen is that rod starts to rot and get worms, and that's why there's battles even in the church, and we don't like those, mm -hmm. but they have to be fought. Because you have the same problem. The world's always trying to creep in. The flesh is always trying to keep greed and self-centeredness. And the devil is always trying to creep in. And many denominations have been overcome by those things. And they've rotted. Uh, and that's why that becomes churches. And it comes to my mind, we're talking about the tip of the spears. We have good friends that are missionaries down in Venezuela right Oh, yeah, good example. Uh, actually, a lot of people that are our friends are in one family. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there's some of them down there. They've there's, been there for a generation. Oh, yes. Yeah, 
well, in the I middle of like, the jungle. I don't know, 80 years or something like that. Their mm -hmm. parents long time down there, and they're still down there now praying. Third generation about, the same family about what to do. Yeah, because Venezuela they, has fallen apart. It's just it's frightening and chaotic, and you know, and they say they know that God is in control, but their prayer is that they don't tempt God beyond what he wants them to do or right. what he wants to do with them but they continue to minister in this chaos and they're having people come to the Lord during this time yeah. which I think of course you would because look at what's going well, on well that happened you. in China too <coughs> when the when the communists came in in that period the China, there were lots of churches in China all over there were two kinds some that had rotted they were called oh shoot I just blanked out I had the name uh, the rice, they created the rice Christians, that's what it was. Mm. They came in and they gave people rice mm. if they came to church. Because they were real poor and people were starving. Hungry, yeah. So all these people came to church because they wanted some rice. And they created a whole big, super big institutions around this. And the other kind were those that made disciples. They were little and they weren't very powerful in, that, in the time just before the communists. So what happened when the communists came in Guess what happened to the rice Christians? I guess they just kind of went the way of the flood. I don't know. No, they the just... communists offered them better rice. Oh, more rice, Because the, the, the Christians yeah. okay. got cut off from their supply of rice from yeah. the West. Yeah. So the communists said, we'll give you rice. So they became communists. Okay, yeah. So what happened to the disciples? They had to go underground. They had to work and still continue to make disciples. Some of them had to flee. And one of the, one of the families that fled was Billy Graham's uh, uh, wife, her family. Uh, her family yeah. was one of those missionaries, yeah. and 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 so many missionaries had to flee, but the Christians stayed behind. Mm -hmm. And there are reports that over half of the country now has, has are underground Christians. So really, that system works better than being the rice Christians. Now today we have the same thing going on in America. We have the feeding program Christians. They they want to feed everybody. They want to give them food. And there's nothing wrong with helping poor people. And no way I'm criticizing that. But, and this is why I like Billy Graham's son, uh, Franklin. Uh, he does this well. He still helps the poor, but he doesn't leave out the gospel. Mm -hmm. He doesn't make the, the stuff the center. He meets basic needs, but he also meets the emotional and spiritual needs of the unbelievers and the believers. So this is one of the ways we overcome the world. It's never simple. It's always scary. And there's those that are on the tip of the spear. That's the missionary and our friends down in Venezuela. They're on the tip of the spear. Oh, yeah, they're way uh, out there on the tip of it. When I tell people I'm a missionary to public school, they look at me like I was insane. You can't talk about God there. Yeah. We were on the tip of the spear. Yeah. We saw this was a foreign religion and a foreign government in, a, in America. And we didn't win. Uh, we had to run out. We lost. Uh, but we still fight. Yeah. And uh, we're still out on the tip of the spear. And that's what our podcasts and our writings and, and uh, our ebooks and things that we do are all about. So, Miss Lee, this is a very important lesson. What are we to do as Christians? Overcome. Set our minds. And what is the phrase we always say when the world attacks us, the flesh attacks us, and the devil attacks us, and we get discouraged, and we think, oh, man. That's what we're here for? This is what we're here <laughs> for. That thing. This is what we're here for. We're here to overcome. This is what we're here for, to overcome for the Lord, not for ourselves. That's mm -hmm. capitalism. Not for the group. That's communism. We're, Christian economics is totally a different kind of thing. Uh, because we're to do it as unto the Lord. And uh, that's why I like this guy, and I want you to pray for him, David Green uh, at Hobby Lobby, that has also creating the create or the, uh, the Bible Museum. Uh, oh, yeah. He is under attack, and he was just fined $3 million because he, he, they said he, and he settled out of court uh, because he, they said, I just saw this on the news today, that he he had illegally imported artifacts wow. in the Middle East. Well, that's the attack. But he he didn't know he was just an amateur doing this. Yeah. And uh, and the Bible Museum is dealing with all this. 
and it's part of the attack that's coming. You ain't begin to see the attack. Right. They don't this want This is it. an important museum. And isn't it? It's up museum. like in Washington D.C. It's somewhere. in Washington D.C. and they just announced. They really don't want it up there. They just and it's right there in the middle of Washington. I mean, it's in the middle. Not a few blocks from the White House, and they have announced that there will be a free entry. In other words, you don't have to pay. They they suggest a fifteen dollar donation because it is a nonprofit, and but nonprofits can charge, mm -hmm. and that is a big step of faith for them oh, yeah. to overcome how to get people there. That's they what just, they're trying they to do. They want people. They know want the people. Truth. They don't want the poor people to be left out. Right. So that I think this is a real wise decision. So be praying for David Green and the Bible Museum. I believe it's one of the most important places coming to America is the Bible Museum. Well, this is Dan Lee, and this has been our Sunday class. And, and what do you do? What are you? What are you doing? And Marley. She's oh, part of this. Marley. That's right. Marley's, Marley's sitting here. Dog. Marley's sitting here with Miss Lee, and we are done. This has been Dan and Lee in our Sunday class. You can see more about us in our Sunday class. or you can go to the Rodney Report. <laughs> And be praying. I just got some new software to create a real simply to take our old books and make them into ebooks. Last year's over.